Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. Linux Newslog is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com. Check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Starting off over at uh, newyorktimes.com, there's a story here called The Many Alternative Computing Worlds of Linux. And this story was primarily written uh, as a direct result of Microsoft dropping support for Windows XP, they're trying to highlight the various uh, uh, computing worlds that you'd see Linux in and may not necessarily notice that there's Linux there or know that there's Linux there. So uh, also uh, gives a quick little rundown of kind of, you know, high level. This is very beginner-ish type uh, information um, for anybody who may be you know, relatively new uh, to computers or even relatively new to Linux. So I thought I would share it because I thought it was an interesting read for, for some of the less technically inclined people. And, you know, you know, my audience is, a, you know, pretty wide range of, 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 uh, technical and not technical people. So anyway, uh, check it out. The uh, next story that we have is from ZDNet. Uh, it's an update to the whole UEFI thing that's been going on. It's entitled UEFI and Windows 8 Update on Windows slash Linux Dual Boot Systems. Uh, the author here, J.A. Watson, uh, for Jamie's Mostly Linux Stuff blog, he's been blogging uh, for the past several months on you know kind of dual booting between a windows and linux machine on a uefi system he gives a, a a nice rundown of of what he's encountered thus far uh it's he posted this april 9th so um it's relatively recent so definitely check it out from eWeek, uh, we covered this a little bit on the last episode of the Geekinator. For those of you who watched both shows, you can probably just skip forward for a second or two, but it's about the OpenSSL security vulnerability. Uh, there's a flaw in OpenSSL that puts Linux distros at risk. Uh, it's called the TLS Heartbeat and Overrun Bug. It's been in present in OpenSSL since March 2012, but it was just recently discovered They've released a patch, OpenSSL 1.0.1G, that's is supposed to fix this. You have to get your OpenSSL on a non-affected version if it's not already, and rekey your stuff. I know it's a pain, but you got to do it. So uh, definitely uh, read up on this, and uh, don't let your systems remain vulnerable. From the Inquirer, IBM announces mainframe Hadoop for Linux and flash storage. IBM has announced System Z hardware and ZOS software products and services for mobile workloads, cloud computing, and Linux systems on Tuesday, the day after its mainframe computing architecture market marked its first 50 years. So uh, pretty awesome. They are saying that the System Z solution for mobile computing will offer new pricing for mobile workloads on ZOS which can improve the cost of growth for mobile transaction volumes that can cause a spike in software charges. So pretty interesting. If you're, on, if you're an IBM shop, this is definitely something you may want to look at. From uh, TalkingCloud.com, Panda Cloud Systems Management adds Linux support. That's right. Panda Security, a cloud security solutions provider, unveiled new features for its Panda Cloud Systems Management, or PCSM, remote monitoring and management solution. The latest version of PCSM allows administrators to manage Linux, Mac, and Windows devices along with smartphones and tablets. So the addition here is Linux, uh, the reason why we're talking about here on this show. So uh, if you are a Panda security client and you need to be able to monitor Linux systems, go check it out. This is good news. From segment next, uh, Chris Roberts confirms Linux support for Star Citizen. 
What? That's right. Star Citizen might get the support for might get support for Linux after all. Uh, it's been quoted. Somebody, one Reddit user, has posted a quote which suggests that it might get Linux support. Um, until now, there's been no confirmation of this claim from any other sources, but Linux support wouldn't be much of a surprise because a lot of people are getting really tired of Windows OS and are switching to Linux. Only time will tell when it actually is, in fact, released for Linux. So, but it looks like a pretty cool game. Definitely check it out. You know, it's, it's one of those things you got to definitely check it out. It's, it looks pretty cool. From datacenterknowledge.com, Red Hat enables Linux licenses to migrate to Google Compute Engine. This is pretty nice. Red Hat has started to allow uh, Linux customers to migrate subscriptions to Google Compute Engine. Citrix integrates Netscaler as a remote services blade. Um, let's see here. They have announced a collaboration with Google that will enable Red Hat customers to move eligible Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscriptions to the Compute Engine using the Red Hat Cloud Access. Uh, cloud Access is a unique bring your own subscription benefit available from Red Hat certified cloud providers that enables customers to move their Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscriptions from on-premise to public clouds. So by joining the Red Hat Certified Cloud Provider program, Google has signified that they are a trusted designation for Red Hat customers, ISVs, and partners to benefit from Red Hat offerings in public cat clouds. So pretty awesome. Definitely give it uh, a, a look if that's something that uh, your shop needs to be able to do. That will do it for this edition of the Geekinator, as always, or Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at uh, quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.